Welcome back to the place where all your fantasies get answered. I'm Rylick. I'm Scooter. I'm here with Hugh Hefner, the gay version. <laughs> I thought I was T-Boz, but <laughs> apparently I'm just nothing more than a porn star. <laughs> that's, all, that's all I got for you today. <laughs> it's the, it's, I think it's, it's really the mustache. I love it, though. Thank you. Know. you. He just gave me a compliment. This is the first compliment <laughs> yeah. I got all season. Wow. Um, it was backhanded. Because <laughs> I feel like you drive an Astro van. <laughs> with a turbo. With steely wheels. <laughs> and the ladder on the back. <laughs> Driving five miles an hour in a neighborhood <laughs> at 2.30 p.m. when school lets out. Oh, not a Junior R. Kelly. <laughs> oh no, don't, oh no. Guys, I was just joking. R. Kelly is terrible. <laughs> no, for real. That man is awful. <laughs> <laughs> Another Pagani Zonda was spotted in the wild, and just like the rest of them, it was totaled. <laughs> Can y'all please stop sending that shit into the air? It, the only way to get a new one is to get a new one and wait six years because who's building that car by hand? Bitch, they be thinking it's a Boeing 747, girl. Every time I see a picture of a Pagani, it's... <laughs> And it costs as much as a boy 37-37 The Corvette Z06 is back and it's given Ferrari. This is the first time American has tried to sound Italian while not being racist. <laughs> <laughs> There's a rumor going around that the Toyota MR2 will finally make a return with the help of Porsche. So let me get this straight. The 86 was Subaru. The Supra was BMW. And now this is Porsche. So Toyota, remind me, what do you do? Please, well, for all our sakes. Range Rover just gave a first look at its new Range Rover for people that buy Range Rovers. And aside from that, I like the ass. <laughs> oh, <God. clears throat> I hope he's from Texas, because if not, I fuck this story up. A Texas man set a record from going from New York City to Los Angeles in 32 hours in a motorcycle. I too would like to ride that long. <laughs> I feel like this circles back to our story about poppers. One way or another, he's gonna do them. <laughs> I have nothing to do with those. <laughs> You know I saw your medicine cabinet, right? <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh. Wait, did you see someone on Twitter say that they made homemade poppers? And everybody was, everybody in the quote, tweet, quote tweets was like, what? <laughs> First of all, how you make a worse version of something that's bad? <laughs> like, already. <laughs> Sir, are you, are you tweeting from right. heaven? What, <laughs> what could you possibly put in your homemade poppers that's worse than the actual thing? You niggas are bored. <laughs> you, be, you know that lightheadedness you get? You be stuck in that forever, girl. You, <laughs> for life. Not in the void. <laughs> <laughs> Just floating in the void. <laughs> Getting Zendaya and Dunes. <laughs> Awful movie. I, but you know the director said he, said he was setting up the next movie. <laughs> At this point, we don't give a f***. <laughs> If the first movie's that bad, we're not gonna come back. 
What does this have to do with me? I fell asleep in the first 15 minutes. <laughs> I was sitting there and I was like, I am in trouble. <laughs> like, you know when you're like, I got to try and stay awake for two. <laughs> do you feel like it was worse than Captain Marvel? Because I was in trouble with that one. No, because I got my sleep in Captain Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> not, not you feeling cheated. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Because I didn't even get to fall asleep. A engineer's LinkedIn profile revealed that the next generation Mustang may be a hybrid, which means now when they try to DM you on LinkedIn, it can be even quieter. <laughs> <laughs> Tell your husband to stop cheating on LinkedIn, please, for all our sakes. To apologize for delays, Ford is gifting its Maverick customers with free accessory kits. I don't give a f where is my car? Says every customer with common sense. <laughs> Ilio Motors makes a comeback with a three-wheeled EV, and I hope they can make a U-turn back to the factory. Ilio Motors makes a comeback with a three-wheeled EV, and EV must stand for why the f did you make this? Yeah, that's awful. That car is terrible. Ilio Motors makes a comeback with a three-wheeled EV, and EV must stand for extra vehicle to get you the f out of that car. <laughs> get me out of there immediately. <laughs> Uber already on the way before I get to the dealership. <laughs> oh, gosh. That looks like the sidecar that you were talking about last week. <laughs> yeah, it gives very Batman and Robin. It's like they put a, they put a, <laughs> they put a shopping cart wheel on the <laughs> back of that. Are we going to fight the Riddler? <laughs> the hell is this? If you pick me up in an Ilio, you are not getting a thing that night. You know what it kind of looks like? It looks like a vibrator. It does. <laughs> in that case, pick me up. <laughs> yeah. Or, in that case, it works because, again, you're not getting anything that night. Uh, <laughs> hey. Sometimes it's better to do it on your own. Saves time. <laughs> That's why they took the sidecar out on their own. <laughs> uh, and then we told you so news. The Genesis GV70 has won Motor Trend's SUV of the year. Did I lie? Did I fucking lie? <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> Y'all see what I deal with. The Genesis GV70 has won Motor Trend's SUV of the year. That just makes one more thing the Koreans are better than us at. Math, fried chicken, K-pop, and saying we're unprovoked. I mean, he's pretty good at it. <laughs> I'm half Korean. In more EV news, the unreliable brand Fisker just debuted its new EV vehicle, and it's cute. But aside from that, <laughs> the next gen Mazda Miata will get a hybrid system, so the brand is now eco and gay friendly. You love to see it. Which means the brand will sell zero cars in Texas. You now don't have to wait to get gas to go to your hookup. Not in a Mazda Miata. And in fake bisexual news, people are still buying Miatas. <laughs> I'm like, girl, give it up. Give it a rest, please. We saw you brought your little friend to dinner, to Thanksgiving. <laughs> the friends of Miata. The friend. Brought your little friend. Lego Technic made a 1,300-piece Batmobile, which is ironic because that's the same number of pieces you end up in if you see the Batmobile in real life. And in 1,300 news, that's how many people have played Batman. What's your favorite Batmobile? Christopher Nolan's. Was that called The Tank? No, that was called, I don't know what it was called. I don't know, but that's my fucking favorite Batmobile. That's like, when I think of what a Batmobile is, that is it. Like, they did the damn thing with the motorcycle coming out of it, with the front wheel. That was some, woo, had me on the edge of my seat. That was badass. Yeah. My favorite is, uh, shit, it's a tie between the Batman Returns Batmobile. Okay, I remember that um, one. Or the animated Robin, series. Like Robin Nipples. No, Batman Returns is Michelle Pfeiffer. Oh, which? Oh, Batman Forever is. He jumped right to the gate. Yeah. 
I mean, because that's what, that's what caught my eye. Right my away. <laughs> it, <laughs> something woke up that day. Like, and it wasn't, guys, and it wasn't my friends. spirit. <laughs> <laughs> guys, more than friends. Hmm, riding the same car. Hard nipples. Does he have room in that sidecar? Hmm. Seems a little sus to me. Hertz just bought 100,000 Teslas for $4.2 billion. Fuck! Scream Chevy Malibu was across the country. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like 100,000 Teslas with cigarette burns. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. And in more Hertz news, they're run by the Ku Klux Klan because all the cars will be white. All of them? Like, like why every rental car is white? <laughs> How do y'all just accept your cars back like that? They're going like, to sell it in two weeks. That's why. <laughs> Having a, a hole in the floor. Like, I'm out here like the Flintstones. <laughs> but you know who doesn't care about that? <laughs> Chantrice from Inglewood. <laughs> <sighs> this is a part where i get to be annoying and tell y'all to like our video and subscribe so we could keep sending you more, more of this fun more, stuff more. about cars scooter sprinted out of here with his wig on backwards to catch a flight to catch a flight so i'm gonna stay here to give you updates that matter Really important updates, such as the fact that next month, November, is cars that we're thankful for. So we're going to take a look at cars that we're thankful for. And every single week, we're going to have a high beam special out on the road. But today, we're going to move past the 90s in a special high beam segment that is only possible because of what this legend did in the 90s. So strap it. I know you are not running the credits while I'm... Do y'all do this while Scooter's here? The disrespect. Just run, just run the high beam segment. No. No, that's cool. Remember when I said the Super was a great starting platform? You don't. It's fine, because I'm going to remind you today. I see a platform. I see something I could take and make my own. Today, we're going to take a look at why Toyota partnering with BMW was one of the best decisions for this platform. This motor takes on power reliably, just like the 2JZ back in the day. So yeah, it's 90s month, but we're going to look at how far along we've gone since then in the Supra. First stop, of course, it's not a performance part. It's wheels. But if you don't like where you're going, what the hell does it matter? you see in front of you are the Apex SM10s in satin bronze. I chose 19 by 9.5 in the front and 19 by 11 in the rear so that they look flush with the end of the body of the car, edge to edge. The extra width on the wheels means extra grip on the road. The wheels are done, so let's go see what's next. What you're looking at is the rebirth of Toyota's legendary Toyota Supra. This ruled supreme in the 90s, but went absent for about a good 20 years. But thanks to BMW, it's back. Many say, oh my God, it's a BMW. This is straying away from the Toyota heritage because everything underneath literally looks and feels like a BMW. But believe it or not, that's the best part. Why? 
This engine codenamed the B58 has been found to be one of the most reliable motors at taking power aftermarket. And when you look at the 2JZ, the engine that powered the Super that this one is replacing, it was doing the exact same thing. So it only makes sense. The one that's here today boasts 0 to 60 times of 3.7 seconds and a quarter mile right around 12. Whew, and that's just from the factory. The moment you modify a car, you can't really picture a world without it. With all of my cars, I either started or completed the performance mods before I did anything cosmetic. Because the most important thing to me is the feeling it gives while making contact with the gravel. But like I said, while modifying, once you see something, it's hard to go back. And on the BMW, I saw the difference it makes when your wheels sit perfectly. So this time, I wanted to strike a balance. Get that out the way with the wheels but also throw some performance parts in there. So today we're gonna to install an engine modification and suspension modification. So we have here an Auto Works, Active Auto Works, high flow catted down pipe. The good thing about this one, it's got a, a Gessie Sport Cat rated for up to 850 horses. So high quality material right here. The reason we changed these out, uh, there's a lot of restrictions with the OEM one that is currently in the car. Obviously for emissions, uh, reaching those in California, the California emission standards, so what this does is it opens it up, allows it to breathe more, uh, therefore making the turbo spool a lot faster and more than anything, giving it that beautiful sound. Let's get started. Okay, so first what we wanna do, obviously remove the engine cover. Really, really easy. Put it off to the side. Now, the second part, what we wanna do from the top is unplug the O2 sensors. We'll be taking out the downpipe with the O2 sensors uh, because they're really tight in there. So we've got to make sure that we get those off and put them onto the new pipe as they should be. So there's two sensors that we have to unplug from the very top. They're for the O2 sensors and they're going to be right at the top, right by the fuel pump. So I want to make sure that you're extremely careful because these will break very easily. One, two. Now, once you unplug them, they are color coded, so you don't have to really worry about that. So we have to remove these from the harness. This is a bit tricky because there's these little prongs that can break if you're too hard with it, or if you stick something in there that's too too big. So what I did is I got a small little screwdriver that I use for, say, my eyeglasses. So they're supposed to just slide out, but once you actually get that little pin is when it slides out. Stick it in from the right-hand side, push to the right, and it will undo itself. So there's gonna be two little clips on the side here that hold down, if you wanna come over on this side. Hold this down. So it's kind of out of the way of the turbo. And if you'll see right in here, there's little clips. One, two. These clips, you just take the cables out of those clips, but there'll be other ones right there. So you just clip it out. So you just push them down. So once we drop it, um, it won't get caught on anything. O2 sensors right there. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna go from the bottom. Um, we're just gonna take the under panel off, I'll let it cool off a little bit more, and then we'll be starting off on the mid pipe. All right, so you need a, a 16 millimeter to take off the, the bottom panel. Let's go under. So the first panel you wanna take off is gonna be this metal panel here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, 10, 11, about 12 screws. All right, so there's gonna be uh, three screws at the top and then two on the sides. All right, so next what you wanna do is you're gonna unbolt this bolt here, which is what holds the mid pipe to the down pipe. So it'll uh, allow us to kind of separate those. Next, what you'll do is there's a bracket for the mid pipe, so you'll want to undo that bolt as well so we have more clearance to push the exhaust back and get those separated. Now is the fun part. We're gonna have to push the mid pipe 
I'm pushing the exhaust to the back until they come apart. You need my help? Ah, there it is. Now, one thing I want to show you, this is going to make it sound a lot better. However, we still have some restrictions in the mid-pipe. This is a resonator, really, really big one. So I think next what we might have to do is uh, find a mid-pipe to make it sound a little bit better. Uh, the infamous V-clamp. On the downpipe, as you'll see there, that screw is holding the V-band clamp together from the downpipe to the turbo. We have to unscrew that bolt. We have to be extremely cautious because uh, it's very common that they basically just spin around. And if it spins around and gets stuck, we have to find a way to uh, cut that bolt. So let's hope that that is not the case here. Now that I have the V-band disconnected, I, I didn't take out the, the bolt myself. I didn't need to last time because it's already expanded enough. Might have to tap it a little bit so it comes off uh, around the whole entire thing. But now there's two bolts holding up the bracket from the downpipe that's preventing us from uh, moving it out. Yeah. Be patient, be patient with it. So what do you say, wait three months? Six, a couple weeks? Let's do a year. Ah, oh, fuck, it's hot, ah, ow. There it is, okay. All right, it's coming out. Wiggle it, make sure the O2 sensors are not stuck on anything. And there it is. Voila. Coming out. Whew. All right, so this is the stock down pipe. This is all cat right here. This is for all the emissions. As you can tell, as we call these cells, there's just a lot more. Therefore, having more restrictions compared to that one. This already comes with the gasket, but make sure that you do install the gasket, or if not, you'll be hearing some uh, weird noises. The O2 sensors, as I said, I took them off together, so I know exactly which one goes to where. Okay, so now that we have transferred over the O2 sensors, the line, the V-band clamp, we are ready to go ahead and put it back in. So we took off the intake. You don't need to take off the intake, but because I was having a hard time aligning it. It's just gonna be easier to have uh, you pushing it from the top and me align it from the bottom. And before we even took the intake off, we started realizing that there's a resonator on here. Toyota or BMW actually put two resonators on here, which takes away from the sound. The intake is what you hear that whoosh. I know Intake that. into the turbo, into the cooler, then into the manifold. Combust. Boom. So we're gonna make an attempt of possibly taking off this resonator to get more of that sound until my intake gets here next week. It makes no sense. I just wanna hear it for now. And we also had to remove one of the strut bars in order to get down in there, but that was perfect because we're actually gonna be taking off the strut bars anyways. We're gonna be replacing them with these beautiful boys. So these three are gonna reinforce the front. That helps with handling on the front end. I have front and rear coming, but for today, we're just putting on the front. Gonna do small, minimal upgrades for the time being. So you do your upgrades incrementally so you can understand what each one does. Today, it's downpipe and struts.
one of the things often tied to a luxury car is a quiet cabin, right? You don't want to hear those squeaks, cracks, whatever it may be. So a lot of them have insulation. That's something that BMW's done really well. I've almost been T-boned by a fire truck with no music on just because I didn't hear it. That's how well it keeps that outside sound out. BMW made the Supra. Yes, Toyota still wanted to go the extra mile with the tuning to make this feel like a Supra, most notably in the cracks and pops that you hear within the exhaust, but BMW still wanted it to feel luxurious. So, within the intake, they put two resonators and a bit of foam for sound dampening. So when we remove the downpipe, there's a chance I could have accidentally taken some of that foam out. Not too sure, but for whatever reason, I'm hearing the intake a lot more than I did before. I keep in mind that my active sound is turned off, the sound that brings the uh, exhaust sounds and engine notes into the car. I've switched that off. I usually recommend doing about one or two mods together at once. Usually you wanna do them individually so you can get a feel for what each thing brings out of the car. In this case, I did downpipe, that's for acceleration, speed. I did the struts, that's for suspension. So the wider wheels and tires are gonna help me keep that power on the ground and also grip the corners. definitely planted before but now it just makes such a difference you have again you have about 25 20 25 more horsepower going through these turns uh, you have a little bit of weight that was taken off from replacing the performance part I went with lighter wheels as well while they're a bit wider they're still made of a lighter material than what comes factory have more meat on the tires so it's just oh it's just such a perfect combo. The steering input is already so direct as it is that you have these struts and it feels like a go-kart. It is just right here. You point and aim. It's literally a point and aim clicker. I'm just going to call it mouse. I'm going to call it mouse pad. So you can hear the downpipe is really taking the exhaust note to another level. Those pops, woo, pops and backfires, something else. I'm honestly blown away. It sounds so good. I thought it was great before.
ass Looking for some titties that'll pop out Shit, give a night to member just to start out Start to tell me in the city Sitting pretty like some Kimmy 